Good morning. It's Derek Watson, the angry dentist. Back on air. <laughs> I don't know why I didn't uh, set out deciding to do a video today. But I, um, I put a, a phone mount in the car. And it didn't occur to me when I put the phone mount in about six months ago that it would make these, uh, it would make uh, holding the phone easier, making videos because, uh, hang on, let me shut this window, it's a bit noisy isn't it? It's one of those days when there's the uh, really harsh sunlight, you know, fairly low in the sky, so I apologise for the lack of contrast. Anyway, how are you? How are you? We haven't spoken for such a long time, I've got so much to catch up on. Tons of tons have happened to me, and I'm sure tons have happened to you. You know, this was last time we spoke was uh, pre-COVID, and uh, I don't know how your surgery is coping. I mean, my surgery is a private surgery, as you know, so we haven't benefited from the NHS largess. <laughs> we, uh, you know, I mean, it, it's a real uh, trial, isn't it, for uh, any system? This sort of uh, a pandemic I suppose or a global financial collapse or a zombie apocalypse or something you know any sort of large-scale test is a good test for any system treatment provision system in dentistry and uh, the uh, NHS sector which is as you know I always maintained is increasingly sort of a, a command and control type centralist uh, Soviet style collectivist approach um, was pitted, wasn't it, against quite a difficult uh, problem, which is how do you cope with a, a virus about which which very little is known? And uh, <laughs> it's like, what a shame, what a shame. We haven't already had a trial run, say in the 1980s, say with something like HIV, you know, that might have informed our, our thinking on this. You know, we, we might have learned from, but no, apparently this is the first virus that's ever been discovered. So um, all our universal precautions, which are supposed to protect us against every virus, uh, including viruses that dentists have and viruses that patients have that dentists don't know that they have and viruses that uh, patients have that nobody knows exist. Uh, all those universal precautions apparently uh, were rubbish and necessitated a complete halt in dentistry uh, as a result because they're, they're all apparently it was all lip service it was all the waste all those masks and all that antiseptic and all the care quality commission paperwork and everything apparently was not no protection at all so the whole thing was uh, ground to a halt didn't it on March the 23rd when a dentist who's never run a dental practice in her life has been a salaried dentist all her life as far as I know if she, if she hasn't been perhaps she'll uh, get in touch in the comments section and let me know you know who uh, had no experience at all in general practice um, decided to um, push the abort button and stop everybody getting dentistry, other than by uh, uh, phone advice and antibiotics through the post. And the, the thing about this COVID crisis is that everything is, uh, you know, all the conventional wisdom is, is all of a sudden it's turned upside down. And the people who turn it upside down, they do so with completely straight faces. They don't even, uh, I don't think they understand they, themselves the irony of, you know, of the fact that uh, you know, to, to get a, an x-ray from my local unit I mean I was you know I mean they, they were really quite horrible if you sent in a, an email referral in the same way as you used to be able to send in a fax referral uh, but they don't like the fact that emails replaced fax so what they did was they said if you're not going to send in the fax you have to send in the patient with a letter and it can't be like a pro forma letter or photocopied letter or, or a letter that's been printed off from an email. It has to be an actual letter on papyrus with a, an original signature. Um, and then, of course, long comes COVID and now um, anyone who sends in a patient with a, a signed bit of paper 
is is now uh, you know persona non grata, and what they want is emails now, and all of a sudden it's essential that you do it by email, and essential that you don't do it by paper. Whereas before it was essential that you did it by paper and, and essential that you didn't do it by email. And both times they argue that that's, you know, it's very sensible because that's the most sensible way to do it. But I do, uh, you know, it just reinforces my world model, which is based around the fact that uh, the NHS is, is run by inefficiently and uh, incompetently by people who don't can't appreciate why it's funny that one minute an email is, is totally unsatisfactory and then the next minute it's totally satisfactory, <laughs> you know. And uh, all sorts of things like that, aren't they, you know? You weren't allowed to go in a shop wearing a mask because they thought you might be a mask robber and they're gonna stick them up. But now if you don't go in with a mask, you get fined uh, 100 quid. But has the number of stick-ups gone up? I mean, <laughs> Has crime rate shot through the roof because now anyone can go in a shop with a mask on? No, no, no. Uh, oh dear, there we are, junction of death in the rain. Well, wet road anyway. So the surgery, my surgery shut down and it shut down for a couple of months. Um, fortunately, and this is something that you'll know if you're a private dentist or a big on dent plan or DPAS or something, private practice plan um, your um, if your model your financial model is based entirely on uh, prevention and what you do is you get your patients in regularly you get them to jump disclosing tablets and uh, uh, concentrate on plaque control and your patients have a very very uh, low incidence of periodontal disease and no decay not, not just a low decay rate no decay then actually a uh, three month or six months shut down is not a big deal you know in fact you could almost shut down for four months a year with that sort of model because uh, you could do all your checkups in January and then just shut down until May and then do all your checkups in May and then shut down until September um, and uh, half the time the patients wouldn't even know you weren't there um, that's what it's taught me uh, my um, hang on I have to get my wing mirror now I don't have automatic wing mirrors well, I do. I've got the Mark I automatic wing mirror, which involves putting the window down and sticking your finger out. Yeah, so, uh, you know, I mean, like most dentists, I spent my life frightened of having more than a week off work. And then all of a sudden you're forced to have two months off work, three months, whatever. And uh, and to be honest with you, I, we're, we're actually, <laughs> we made more money not working than we made working. I got no lab bills. I got no, <laughs> you know, apart from my rent and the people who take my waste away that wouldn't, wouldn't, you know, insisted on charging me for carrying away no waste. I really, I didn't have any bills. I only had to pay the uh, my mortgage and uh, which I, I'm doing out of savings, which is not a problem. And, uh, And the deep pass income still coming in, so you know we. And also, we took out a business bounce back loan, which I had. I had about twenty when I bought the surgery. I paid about 190 grand for the surgery, which is not a massive amount to buy a dental surgery. Um, but the problem was that it only had a five-year lease on the premises, so I had to borrow 190 grand over five years, which worked out about 3,000 something a month which is, is all right, you know, uh, providing you're turning over sort of somewhere between 10 and 15 grand a month, you can, you can cope with that. But uh, um, I was left with, I think, uh, six months left on the loan and about 20 grand outstanding and obviously no income. So what I did was I, re, I borrowed another 10, refinanced it over five years. And so the payment's gone down from 3,000 something to nothing for a year and then 500 pounds a month so uh, you know so that's and that was the major millstone around my neck that loan repayment so with no no loan repayment going out the deep money coming in 
no lab bells and no sundries bells or anything. Yeah, that's an interesting way to drive. Oh. Um, you know. And now, of course, we're booked up six and a half weeks ahead. I mean, you're looking at a surgery. You know, I used to complain about the fact. Well, I didn't complain about it, but I mean, you know, it used to be a feature of the surgery that we were only booked up about a week ahead and we were never really full that week, you know. There was always, we could always book someone in tomorrow, if not today, and certainly uh, before the end of the week. And now all of a sudden we're booked up solid six and a half weeks ahead. Which is a weird thing. I mean, I'd like to think it's because we've gone viral and, uh, you know, and to a certain extent we, we have been open, whereas other, I mean, I think what, what we've seen really is something that I would been predicting since 1992, which is a total collapse of the National Health Service. I mean, they, they've got this deal where they were paid pretty much their full contract value for um, April, May and June, part of June, with a 16% uh, abatement or 14% abatement, I forget, uh, by virtue of the fact that a lot of their variable costs were, were not, you know, if they weren't paying uh, some of their bills. And um, so, basically, they got 100% abated, and then um, they have to sign this undertaking to do at least 20% of their pre-COVID workload, and then they're getting 100% of their contractual payments. So it's a bit like your boss saying, you know, um, I'll keep you on a full pay, providing you work one day a week. And so um, I mean, they are literally working one day a week. I mean, there is a dentist around here who is literally opening open one day a week. And uh, the other thing, of course, is that they uh, had to sign an undertaking not to go private or increase their, their private proportion. And ostensibly that's because they shouldn't really be entitled to their pre-contractual payment in full if they are doing a private conversion as a result of the COVID thing. But um, um, I think there's there's a little bit of um, Department of Health worry that uh, a lot of dentists are going to go private because, I mean, why wouldn't you? I mean, <laughs> your surgery is empty four days a week. You've got a waiting list that stretches from here to next Christmas after next. And, uh, and uh, you're getting 100% of your NHS income without too much checking. I mean, why wouldn't you be doing treating all those patients privately? I just don't know. And I'm sure a lot, a lot of people are in the same way as uh, a lot of, not so many dentists probably, but a lot of employers are uh, claiming furlough payments and, uh, and still getting the staff to work from home on the basis that who the hell's gonna find out, you know, unless the staff dob them in. And it's done on the undertaking that uh, if the staff so much as make a peep, then they can forget being staff. <laughs> I mean, you've got to laugh at the government, haven't you, really? You've got to laugh. And in the meantime, they're printing money. They're expanding the money supply. Like, uh, I mean, I don't think even... <laughs> that's that Labour leader, Jeremy. What's his name? I don't, I don't think even he would print money as fast as the, the government is now printing money. I don't think he'd have had the balls to do it. Even, I don't think, <laughs> I don't even, the left leftist, most collectivist, Marxist uh, Labour leader could have dreamt of the speed at which the government is now giving away money. I mean, it's a billion for everybody. I mean, it's a... Leaving aside the uh, money that they're spending on NHS dentistry to, to get nothing back in return. And uh, it's like um, you, know, you, you can get a bounce back loan at 2.5%, which is not actually, um, it's not that low an interest rate, to be honest. It's, for the bank, the bank it's in, it's, uh, they can borrow the money at nothing they're lending it out at two and a half percent, it's risk free. So they shouldn't really be earning any interest on it at all, because it's risk free, uh, other than uh, the risk that uh, the purchasing power of the money will have diminished by the time that they get the, get the money back. But the government's gonna underwrite the actual loan. And, um, but that's not all, you know, we got 10,000 pounds off the local council. 
we didn't as a self-employed person I didn't actually claim any unemployment benefits self-employed unemployment but we've got two staff on furlough I mean you and when you get to the point where you can get 50 pounds to um, repair your bike you know the government has lost the plot you know uh, they've um, zero rated uh, house purchases up to 500,000 to try and help the housing market and the government money doesn't do anything other than distort the market you know I mean that's where they found that in America if you try and like for example with student loans if you uh, the government loans the money to students to pay for student fees and guarantees it then all that happens is the colleges put the fees up you know so the students end up basically paying more for the same thing getting get themselves in debt for the rest of their life just because um, and, the, and so it brings about the opposite result the, the government whatever the government subsidizes uh, ends up um, being distorted so as you probably guessed I'm a free marketeer but the biggest uh, problem in dentistry at the moment is the fact that uh, I think in, in the early days when you know we thought it was a zombie apocalypse and we didn't know how bad this virus was going to be uh, you can appreciate that extreme measures were brought in and you know, including crippling the economy uh, by forcing everybody to stay at home and quarantine and uh, but, but as um, it became apparent that it's basically another coronavirus <clears throat> You know, similar to SARS, <coughs> perhaps a bit worse than the flu in terms of fatality rates. Did you hear, did you hear me coughing? That was bad. That's worrying, isn't it? Every time anyone coughs now, you think that's it, mate. I've had it. Um, what they should have done was they should have loosened up the uh, sanctions extremely quickly, in the same way as uh, when AIDS was new. And we thought that nobody would ever have, be able to have sex again and the human race would die out because we couldn't procreate. Uh, and then it was very quickly found that um, just normal sex, what I call vaginal sex, normal sex is, was not really a route of transmission. It was mainly uh, sharing contaminated needles and uh, sex in ways that the body wasn't really designed for. And uh, not to put a too fine a point on it. And, uh, what was the other one? Oh yeah, blood contaminated blood transfusions made from America, and then and then everybody breathes a sigh of relief, you know. But and but sexual habits did change, and I think social habits will change as a result of this. You know, we, we'll never go back to um, in the same way as we'll never go back to the swinging sixties. We're never going to go back to uh, the days when uh, you know you used to get a hundred thousand people in Wembley Stadium. But uh, the requirement to uh, shut your surgery for an hour every every time you do a filling or a scaling, of course, is not so much not so onerous for private surgeries. I mean, we, for example, have got two practices, and they're like cubicles; they're across from each other, and we just alternate between the two when we need to, or we do the fillings or the scalings last thing. But um, for an NHS that uh, was built and only functions on the basis of low quality, low cost, repeat restorative work, uh, that has far greater implications. And all the again, all the moaning about the fact that you know the NHS dental service cost 300 million or 400 million or whatever, and and, and it, you know there was absolutely no more money <laughs> to do anything any differently or any better. Um, they're now they're now going to be spending 300 or 400 million whatever on it and and only getting 20 percent of the work done so how are they going to do that you know are they going to quadruple the workforce that's that's the biggest problem for the nhs not so much that they are paying what they were contracted to pay and getting far less in terms of output but the whole model the whole collectivist model which was based on micromanaging throughput uh, they're now they're now hoist by their own petard because the uh, over cautionary uh, approach is going to it, it just drives a coach and horses through their their clinical and financial models
So I'll be interested to see what emerges at the other side. And in the meantime, we're booked up six weeks ahead. So I don't really care why they're going down the pan. Um, it's just, uh, it's an ill wind, isn't it? Right, uh, nice to talk to you. Sorry about the uh, quality of the uh, filmography. I'll uh, perhaps we'll talk again. Bye.